Hello statistics students, my name is Jamie Amy and this video is our discussion on section 9.3, two dependent samples, matched pairs. Okay, dependent samples, what does that mean? It means that if the sample values are paired, such as before and after, um, or even husband and wife, so if they're paired in some way, then we call them dependent samples. Uh, the advantage of using matched pairs is that we reduce extraneous variation and uh, we're going to try some examples now. Oh, let's get our notation down first. Uh, two population means is what we're addressing, dependent samples this time. Contrary to our last section, 9.2, which was two population means independent samples. Okay. Notice in our notation that we have something new. We have a lowercase d, and that lowercase d is to represent the individual differences between the two values of a single matched pair. Uh, let me use a little example to explain. If you're talking about a weight loss program, and you go into the program weighing 200 pounds, and you leave the program weighing 175 pounds, then your lowercase d would equal negative 25. d could also be zero or a positive value. Mu, well, you guys are used to mu, but you haven't seen it with that sub d. And that would uh, represent the mean value, or the average if you need to think of it that way, of the differences of the population of all matched pairs of data d bar, that's how you read this one, just like x bar, but you read it d bar, and that represents the mean value of the differences, d, for the paired sample data. So mu sub d and d bar, they both represent the mean, just like mu and x bar, except mu is for the population and d is for the sample. Hopefully that will help you. Lowercase s, you guys know, is the sample standard deviation, but when it has a sub d, it means that it's the standard deviation of the differences, the negative 25, stuff like that, from the weight loss example I was just discussing. And lowercase n is our number of pairs of sample data. Careful, it's tempting to think lowercase n is all the sample data, but it would be each pair of sample data gets counted as one value as far as calculating lowercase n. Requirements, sample data are dependent, simple random samples, everything's greater than 30, and our population needs to be approximately normal. Okay, if that is our scenario, we are going to uh, run a program called the t-test if we are requested to test someone's claim, and t-interval if we are requested to construct a confidence interval. These programs are not new. You guys have used these before in chapter one for uh, one population. So how is it that we can possibly be using these same two programs except we're dealing with two populations? Okay, and the answer to that is, yes, we are dealing with two populations, but we're really interested in the differences of the paired uh, sample values. So really, we're only looking at one list, list one, for example, and that list will just have the differences. It's not going to have all of the befores and all of the afters, or all of the husband's uh, values and all of the wife's values. It's just going to have um, the differences in those two populations, therefore creating one population of its own which is why you see t-test and t-interval without the number two in front. It's a little tricky, so heads up for that. Let's try an example. With a significance level of 0.05, test the claim that for the population of heights of presidents and their main opponents, the differences have a mean greater than zero centimeters. Uh, that would mean that presidents tend to be taller than their main opponent. Okay, so we have two sets of data values here. We have the president and we have the main opponent and their heights are listed in centimeters. So as you can see at the moment, we have two populations. 
but we're going to pair them together and we're just going to look at their differences. For example, the difference between 189 and 170 is uh, positive 19. The difference between 173 and 185 is negative 12. 183 minus 175 is positive 8. Uh, this paired value, both the president and the main opponent were the same height, so 180 centimeters each, which means that their difference is 0 centimeters. And last one, 179 centimeters and 178 centimeters have a difference of one centimeter. So it's this population that's going to go into L sub 1, which is why we're running t-test, not anything that starts with the number 2. Okay, setting up our null and alternative. Oh, that should be a sub 1 right there. Two capital H's, sub naught, sub 1 mu sub d, because we're talking about the mean of the differences, mu sub d again, equal sign you know is always true for the null hypothesis, and we are using a greater than sign for the alternative hypothesis because of the wording of the claim that they have a mean greater than zero centimeters. Okay, let's do this together. Pick up your calculator, turn it on, clear it. Okay, everybody hit stat. Arrow over to, or don't arrow over, go right into edit. We're going to go into enter the differences into list one. Clear out any old data you have there by hovering over list one and hitting clear, and then enter that. All right, so my differences are 19, negative 12. Oh, pause. When you type in the negative 12, some of your calculators will uh, say it's an error if you put the minus sign for the negative. So make sure you use the actual negative sign, which it looks like this key on your calculator. It's right below the three, okay? Then it's eight, then it's zero, then it's one. Okay, now we're gonna hit stat again. This time we arrow over to tests and scroll down to t-test. Mine's the second option. And it is asking us er, if we want to run this program based off the data or off of the stats. Okay, well, if we were basing it off the stats, we would need X bar and S and N. Um, I don't see those right there, but I could possibly calculate those. But instead, if I highlight data, it says, okay, you don't have to calculate those stats. Just tell, us, tell me, the program, where you entered the data, like list one. So make sure data is highlighted. Mu sub naught is the next thing they want from us, and that is zero. So your inputs, mu sub naught equals zero. Your next input, I put mine into list one. So if you put yours into list two for some reason, just hit second and the number two. Frequency is one. And then you want to make sure that your um, inequality it looks like this the greater than mu sub naught is highlighted. Once that is, calculate, and you can see your first output there, t equals is the test statistic, 0 0.62829 and so on. Second output is your p-value, p equals 0 0.2819 and so on. I am using the p-value method here in that I am comparing the p-value to the significance level alpha Alpha was given to us in the problem, first line up here. And it looks like P, so 0.28, is greater than 0.05. And you guys know the rhyme, P is high, the null will fly. So we will fail to reject the null hypothesis, and our conclusion would then be there is not, first blank to fill in, Sufficient evidence to support uh, support it's the second blank we had to fill in based on the original claim not containing equality. The claim for the population of heights of presidents and their main opponents. The difference is having a mean greater than zero centimeters. In other words, presidents do not appear to be taller than their um, main opponent. Hmm. Well, we only looked at five of the presidents and their main opponents uh, paired sample values, so maybe if we looked at more of them, we might find something different, or we might not. Okay, interesting question there. 
All right, let's uh, support our conclusion with a 90% confidence interval for mu sub d. All right, so we are, are going to hit stat edit and enter that data into list one and then stat test and this time we're going to run the t interval. All right, so calculator's out. I'm just gonna go stat test and down to t interval because my data is still sitting in list one. Uh, but if for some reason you paused the video and cleared your data out, then you're going to want to go stat, edit, and enter the differences into list one, stat, test, and then you'll be caught up to me, T interval. Okay, I'm going to run this off of data. Mine is in list one, frequency of one, confidence level 0 0.90, and the problem here, 90% is our C level, and calculating that. The output screen gives us a lower confidence limit of negative 7.658 and an upper confidence limit of 14.058. Notice that this one is negative and this one is positive, which means if we were to graph these on a number line, zero would be somewhere in between the two. This is the same exact confidence interval, but it is now written in a different notation called a complex I'm sorry, a compound inequality. And the limits have different signs. Like I said, one negative, one positive. That means that the interval does contain zero, suggesting that there is no difference uh, between the heights of presence and the main opponent. And that will finish our discussion on section 9.3. Thank you for joining me, and I will 